Hey guys, this is the third installment of the Tower series tutorial, probably the last one for the Tower. Um, we went through how to basically make the general structure in the first one, and then we went into uh, some kind of tips and tricks as you start to develop uh, more of the, the levels of it. But what I'm going to do for this one is I'm not going to bring you through the building process, although I know that can be helpful in its own way, but I went and built a bunch more um, levels and I'm going to deconstruct what I did because I, I think what we're going to go into today is like special effects and things that you can do that frankly if you just watched me do it it would take an awfully long time so um, what I'll do is uh, because I do a lot of experimenting when I'm creating effects so here I've landed on sort of a, an, a particular effect and I'll deconstruct how it works with you uh, so you know how, how I did it. So I am going to um, show you some changes that I did. So I mentioned that I would do some alternatives to the base. And so here's you know another alternative to that. And this design uses uh, the same principles I used before, but I actually used a transparent floor. So this pattern here, this empty pattern is actually usable. And it just doesn't have any artifacts or anything in it. So if you use that, you make it a certain color, and then you make that color um, semi-transparent, it will uh, it will create a shadow for you. Um, actually, you know what? For this one, I didn't end up using that, come to think of it, although that is an option. But because it's included in Krager's pack, I did actually use this shadow at 50% to build this. So two different ways to do it. If you don't want or don't have Krager's pack, you can just use the built-in tools. They work just the same. That's one version. And here's another version. This one has more of your traditional kind of crenellation embellishment at the base of the tower. You know, I put in a, a drawbridge here. Um, and then I put some landscaping in a moat around it. And one of the things I thought was really cool is um, the same guy, Prentice of Owl, who, who does the clouds that, you know, I use a lot for effects. He also has a pack called Vines. And the vine pack has a lot of really useful things in it, uh, not the least of which are the vines themselves, which you can wrap around things and do a lot of really cool stuff with. I've actually put these underwater and made, um, you know, you can make seaweed out of them. But he's, and then he's, of course, got um, patterns that you can lay down which are helpful. And then he also has what I thought was unique is material brush. And that's what this stuff is here. And what I did was I laid it down below ground and that way anything above water showed up above water and anything below water showed up below. And I thought it just made a good effect. Like maybe there's just a lot of defense around this, some overgrown stuff. I could add, you know, thorns and other undergrowth to that, but just kind of a cool effect that I thought could be useful in a bunch of different circumstances. So with that, we're going to get into the tutorial itself. I'll point this out here. You're going to see this little symbol um, throughout the maps and we'll wonder what it is. It could be nothing. And if you're putting together a game with these maps, you could just say maps, just an embellishment or, or whatever. Or if you get a hold of the maps, you can certainly delete it. But um, as I was building it, I was thinking of gameplay and how I have different staircases and configurations leading to different levels and I wanted the the DM to have the flexibility to um, route their their players however they wanted to. So you'll see that I built doors into a lot of my levels and then I built this concept of a teleporter. And this is just a, a couple of uh, lights, um, you know, uh, a piece of stair component and then this colored in a certain way. Um, and then that's a, a transparent rug that I put around it. And this gives me an asset that I can export. Um, and I would export it in a three by three square so that it's snapped to grid. And then anyone who plays the map can just drop that asset right on top of this little symbol. So maybe there's something you have to unlock in this level and then the teleporter will appear. Um, and that teleporter can take you to another level and maybe this is the destination point of it. So it's this idea that I wanted to create a flexible gameplay um, element, so you'll see that teleporter in all of the rooms. 
uh, you'll notice I introduced that teleporter here in this bedroom uh, level. I'll, I'll put some more stuff in here when I actually go live with it. But you can see I just added a couple of beds, simple stuff for now. But I put this behind a locked door and I said maybe this is, uh, you know, this is a place where that concept is introduced. So let's go to this level. This is the library. And you can see that I wanted to give it a certain motif, kind of dark and mysterious. This is a essentially a wizard or a necromancer's, necromancer's library. And I'll just point out some things that I did in here. Um, just to kind of start in no particular order, you can see how I do picture frames. I take stair components and I just put them at certain levels over or under and I assemble what looks like an ornate mirror or picture frame. And when you're describing the scene to your players, you have now the liberty to say, you know, there's images of death or there's images of his family or whatever. You can see there's other ways that I make these just different sizes overlaid differently over each other. Gives you an easy way to do or to simulate um, artwork. You'll see I also do things where if I'm putting shelves in, I'll put things underneath them and I'll just try to shade everything so that the stuff lower down is more obscured. I wanted to point out these, um, these bookshelves. So I wanted to create this idea of a sense of height. So I have at the top this bookshelf that's um, scaled really large. And then at the bottom, I have the same exact bookshelf scaled very small. And then I just stack them, you turn off snap to grid, and you stack them and you put them over and under. This one is at layer 200. This one is at layer 100 and then I did it over and under. I even pulled some of the shelves out so that I could slide in some of these scrolls. So you can see there's like a shelf missing here, um, but that's where these scrolls happen to sit. And then I used some, um, some pieces, some stair pieces to finish it off. I added some other embellishments like these orbs with some lights around them. When I finally put this into Foundry, I'll put some magical effects on these that really make them pop and look active and live. Same thing with like candles, things like that. You'll notice around the fire, I did some things here. Um, the rug, I like to make the rugs maybe a little bit more embellished, so I use some semi-transparent um, magic circles on them. The rug itself, if I can get to it, there's a lot of shadows over it. Let me see if I can get to this rug. Uh, it's level 100. It's just a colored rug using the rug pattern, which is here. And then what I like to do to finish the rugs in some cases is I'll use that empty pattern that you saw before. This one, colored white and transparent. And I will lay that over just using the polygon tool. So I will just drag this out and create a polygon uh, rectangle. And essentially, you know, fill it in so that uh, so it looks like it's got a real edge. There are some tools like Forgotten Adventures provides a, you know, a carpet banner, but I don't really like it as much. Obviously, I could go in and correct some of these slight imperfections, but I like this look generally better. And because it's a floor tool, it'll sit well underneath all the shadows at level one, so I can obscure everything in the same layer of shadows. I did put shadows all over here. Um, if I felt like the light would throw itself in a way that would obscure things. You can see I've got shadows coming out from the uh, you know, that book stand. I've even got shadows behind some of these books that are lying there. And there's different ways you can use your shadows. Um, you know, the shadows even behind this. Any Anywhere that I thought something was high enough, even behind this book, where it was high enough that it would cast a shadow from this bright fire, I did that. You'll also notice I used some of those uh, same magic circles, which are available in, I think it's actually standard uh, stock dungeon draft. And I made them very, very light, very transparent. And I thought maybe this is where the wizard was sc scrawling with this knife, kind of etching into his desk some of these experimental, um, you know, magic circles that he was, uh, that he was studying. I also put them just mysteriously around the floor. One, to break up the floor. Two, to introduce something that your players might notice. And just, if they do, it kind of gives this idea of this whole thing. Is, is, um, there's a lot of magical research that's going on in here, something like that. Uh, 
Another thing I wanted to show you is the spire itself. You notice that I used the cloud pack and I used the ones that have more of a line drawing in it. Don't know if I like it better or worse, but feels a little bit more ribbony like energy. And all this is, is just a bunch of red, orange, and uh, yellow clouds spammed with the um, scatter tool. So if I go into the scatter tool and I look up cloud and I grab the four that I like, and I go over here and I give them yellow, orange, and red randomly. Oh, and then also I want to decrease the scale. And that, and of course, turn off snap to grid. And that gives me the ability to, to spam these. Now, you can put it together randomly, or you can, what fire really looks like is yellow uh, in, the, in the inner part. So in the yellow ones, I might put the intersection. Then if I have one that I don't want or I've got too much yellow, I can keep going until I find a red. And I'm holding down shift and turning my mouse wheel. And so then I will find some red ones and put them towards the outside. And that's how you can assemble fire just using the clouds uh, pack. Now, with all that said, I know that AOA and Krager and others are working on other packs that will support more of these effects. So you'll see legitimate fire come out and things like that. But these are tricks that you can always use just with what you've already got to help assemble these things. You notice the rest of this stuff is just pieces of stair assembled. Um, there's a beam, there's just a piece of floor colored a certain way, and all just assembled to ultimately make what I think is a pretty good fireplace. And it's it's a wizard's, you know, uh, tower, so this fire is okay to look magical. But in the same thing, I, I could make this a blue or a green fire if I thought that was uh, what I wanted to achieve. And then ultimately, again, when I put it into Foundry, I can use some of their dynamic lighting effects to really make this thing dance and move in interesting ways. You can see here's that symbol. That's how I've uh, kind of built this level. Let's go to the next one. This level is a scrying pool. I wanted to leave it open for maybe an encounter to happen. Um, you, I'll just kind of point out some of the things I did here. So. Since I'm in Dungeon Draft, you'll notice potentially the, the uh, very subtle water effect going on here. This is a wall, and then everything above this wall, except for these two skulls, is below the water line. I think maybe there's some clouds that are above the water line, but everything else is below. So what I mean by the water line is I actually used a water brush with um, some amber colors, and then I painted this... Uh, water into this section. If I was going to delete this water by holding down Alt, you can see now the water's gone. It doesn't have that effect. I like that the water um, obscures things, like these bodies looked a little bit more when the water was there. They look a little bit more like maybe they're statues. Um, to let you know what's going on here, there's a bunch of lights that I used. First of all, I spammed the place with white and amber clouds in order to make it look cloudy. And then I put these little lights in there to highlight some of those clouds, and it does create a good um, highlight effect. Um, this floor down here is actually um, at level minus 100, so it's below the water, as is these objects. So these are dead bodies from the pack, uh, from the Gotten Adventures pack. I put shadows behind their heads, just because this light source, this orb, would cast shadows. So I, I am conscious of shadows even underwater. And then this, uh, if I can get to it, this body down here uh, came from the asset pack. And then I put shadows behind his back as well. So you can see I really did try to adhere to all the same design principles, even in strange situations where things are underwater. Some other things to point out, these statues are above the wall line so that this wall looks more like a retaining wall and not a floor to ceiling wall. And then because they're above the floor line to cast shadows from them, here again I used the shadow, 50% shadow um, pattern from Krager's pack and I just hand drew a shadow here. And I did it at level 900 because it's got to sit above even this, um, this thing. But really it's just, it's drawing, if I go here, it's just drawing polygons and eyeballing where you want them to go 
and then maybe you do a spline at the end, maybe you don't. In this case, I had to in order to get it above that wall line. And then I can finish it off. And what's nice when you put it at level 900 is it covers everything underneath it in shadow, which I think is what shadows really should be doing. Um, other things to point out, this floor is the same amber color as everything else because I may want to change all of this to a green or blue or some other scrying pool color at a later date. Um, and then you'll also notice that I use the, the same trick. I use the same uh, amber color and um, use the, uh, the metal floor uh, pattern in order to cover some of these bricks. And the story that I'm trying to tell here, even if it's not obvious, is that the amount of time someone spent staring into this pool over the millennia that this tower existed, that this is really where it's worn away. Or maybe it's the magic essence of the pool has an effect on, uh, on physical matter, and so it wears away. This is just visual storytelling that may or may not come up. It may not even be noticed, but I think at the end of the day, it, your players notice that this map is, has really got some story behind it. And here's my little teleport symbol, in case I want to use that later. And you'll notice also I introduced these locked doors so that the DM can decide when a door or a staircase is accessible and when it's not. Again, just for how you want to bring your party through, uh, through the tower. This next level is an animal cage. Maybe this necromancer is doing some really nefarious things with animals. Unfortunately, these cages are open, so when your party stumbles in here, it's probably not going to be a great scene, uh, not a safe scene anyway. Um, I wanted to point out some of the things I'm using in here. First of all, this is a um, this is a uh, what's it called a great uh, pattern. This particular one that I drew in a circle using splines. I pulled it out here to support this staircase leading up. And you can see how I've designed this level in general is, you know, a player can come in here or maybe teleport in, and then you have to go up and around and in, or potentially the opposite direction. And it, it forces your players through a route that you can have a nice battle in here. And you have a um, tactical top and bottom and things that you can hide behind. So I think that this would be a really fun map to play. Let's go into some of the technical things that I did in here to make some of these effects. First of all, you'll notice one of my favorite things on this map is this shadow underneath the floor. And you may be wondering, wow, how did you do that? Did you have to do that by hand. It's actually really easy to do. If I take this floor and I make a copy of it, And then when I click on it, if I change it all the way to black and then drop it down to about 40% opacity, 40% is a pretty good rule of thumb for shadows. You can see it's now a shadow of its former self. Um, and that's exactly what that is over there. I created a shadow version of the floor. I put it underneath this one and that creates this nice separation and it makes it really clean too. And then all I had to do, uh, if I can grab that, is I had to change the outside edge so that it fit within the uh, uh, within the walls here. So they're just hidden under that walls, but that creates a really super nice separated effect. Um, I used a bunch of the cages from uh, you know from the Forgotten Adventures pack to create these cages, a mix of rusted and not. Um, let me show you how I made this staircase. This is kind of fun. Staircase is actually just made up of a, a bunch of floor, floor pieces. And so how you do it is you go and you create a floor piece. Uh, let's go to pattern shape tool. And go up and grab the right piece. Then I'm just gonna create a, well, let's do this. Try that again. So I'll create a piece of floor, but this isn't the way that I want it. So once you've created it, then you can edit the points. And you can grab the elements that you want. Uh, 
I'm not going to try to make this as precise as I did. But now that is a floor piece that you can use over and over again. So I just copy and paste it. And then I strategically put them on top of each other, use some, uh, some shadow paths to create some depth. There's a bunch of shadow paths in here. And then if I use some railing paths like you have in the Forgotten Adventure set, which are all these in here, then, and I use them above and below, I can essentially assemble my own custom metal staircase, which is not an asset in Forgotten Adventures, but it is one you can create using their components. And you'll notice this is just that same, same trick, that pattern made uh, dark and semi-transparent. So that's how you make that staircase to keep kind of walking you through some other elements that I think are important. Uh, first of all, there's an asset pack that's new with Forgotten Adventures for mines and mine parts. And a lot of these components come from that. Even though I haven't made a mine, I'm finding a lot of utility in that pack. And I'll show you here with some other maps, some things I did. One of the things I want to point out is the lighting in here. You'll notice that the lights around the torches are congregated, but you'll notice that I also put a bunch of little lights around little things over here. And why did I do that? So maybe I want to make this map darker, um, or maybe I just want to call the attention of my players to certain things, but I'm really looking at this torch and I'm imagining, okay, where all would it cast light? And yeah, I could cast a brighter light with the light tool, but that can get messy and it can do things that I don't want to do or make things too bright in a way that I don't want to make them. So if I stick with this really tactical pinhole tool and I reduce its range down to almost nothing, maybe its intensity about a quarter, I can highlight things very subtly that I want to highlight. So you'll see that I highlighted uh, the edge of that, um, you know, that cage, a little bit of this cage the door of that cage. I highlighted this ladder because I want my players to notice it. I highlighted even little edges that would catch the light on some of these, there's another torch down here, on some of these cages. And this really probably seems subtle, but without it, um, these things just kind of blend in. And so now, even over here, this, this bucket normally would have been unseeable, but now this is all lit up. I even, lit up the edge of this board just because it stuck out enough that I thought the fire would catch it. So just another little tiny tip that you can use to really accentuate your, um, your maps. I think that's all the important stuff to show you on this level. We'll jump up to the next one. Okay, so this one is a fine dining room. Maybe this necromancer eats here. Maybe this is just a lord that lives in this tower and you're not going to go through the other elements. But let me point out some things at this level that I think will be helpful. First of all, you know, this floor color is, is a much darker shade of, of wood. And I want you to encourage you to play around with your default colors because I think this looks really nice. And it looks a little ominous too. It's darker. It creates a good contrast with this, this lighter um, edge here. So, you know, think about your colors. Uh, other things that I did here is I'm playing with the more of a Harry Potter-esque, you know, floating candles. So I just created a drop shadow underneath them just with Krieger's shadows, just to make it look like they're floating there. Because I did want this to feel more like a wizard's uh, thing. And if I wanted to change this, I can go back in and change it with the original files. But here you've got some more floating candles. You've got some of those same picture frame effects that I, I showed you before. Um, how I do uh, curtains is I use the colorable uh, runner, just one of the objects that are available to you in Forgotten Adventures. And then I use uh, this colorable blanket down below. So this is at level one, while this is at level 700. There's, you know, just some of the things you would expect, the uh, stair components making up the railing. And I think it makes for a pretty good um, look. There are some assets, like Forgotten Adventures has, if I can find it quickly, they have, it's at the right level. You know, they have these uh, 
curtains, but I don't like them. You can't open and close them. There's no like rod to like stand in the middle. So I don't really use them a whole lot, although they can be helpful in certain situations. Um, here, looking more at this window, you can see also that I used, this is really just a wall where I just used some of these um, uh, gradient shadow paths to essentially just make it look rounded. And by making it look rounded, it suggests that there's either a door here or there's a window. And to even further suggest there's a window, I put a little lip on there, which is really just another path that I used. And then I used these blankets using the same blue hex code that I've used everywhere else, because again, these I may want to make these black or green. These are just a couple of blankets flipped around. This is actually a comforter <laughs> hidden. Uh, to make it look like there's a banner hanging out of that window and maybe blowing in the wind a little bit. Um, other things, here's your teleporter. I used the same fire effect that I did down uh, down at the, uh, the other level. And instead of using a wood object, I just used a floor piece and then some shadow patterns around it to make it look rounded. If I'm looking at the shadows, whenever I look at a room, I'm looking at the shadows. Um, by the way, here's some of the same carpet effect that I did before. Wibbly wobbly line in order to give this a nice edge. Um, but again, back to shadows. Since there's a, a bright fire here, I thought, of course, these are going to be obscured. So I just put some shadows in there because I want to create the drama. I want this fire to create the drama in here. I want my players looking at whatever nefarious uh, person or thing is sitting in this chair um, with the fire behind them thinking they might be in danger. Um, other things I did with fire, so these are wine bottles, so I just drew with that pattern tool a wine bottle shadow. I did the same thing here. This may seem ridiculous, but it does really make it look like the light is being thrown across the room. Um, I put, rather than just trying to draw hand shadows, I just put um, some of the Krager shadows under, under these wine goblets. But again, just looking at the, the room saying, you know, how would light cast across it? I still have some cleanup work to do in here. Um, you'll also notice that I use big shadows in the middle of these um, floors. I did want to obscure the floor a little bit. I wanted to create a darker ambiance, but I didn't want to just darken the whole the whole thing. Um, so this helps me break up that floor a little and create some ambiance around it. Um, I did want to introduce um, the ability to go outside. So this is high enough now that I feel like windows and balconies can start to be introduced. And here, um, I really like this wall as a ledge. I liked how it, I just wanted to match the rest of the outside, but then it looked really flat. So I just created fake um, shadows here. So if I was going to go into my path tool at points, you can see I just made it look like there, there are uh, supports under here and that there's, you know, open air in between them. So, uh, and then this is just another shadow path laid a couple of times. It's this one here, I think comes standard with the, the pack. It'd be nice to have one that is a little bit darker than this because I did have to lay it down a couple of times. But you can see it, it, it gives you the idea that there's a, there's a shadow there. And by the way, this flag, that's an object. You just look up flag uh, in your objects and you can find the shadow for the flag. Here's the two flags, then here's the shadows that go with them. So if you didn't know that existed, it can be super helpful when you're laying flags down. I think that's most of what I wanted to show you on this level. You can see other little details, like I thought maybe these are swords or something, but these are just more stair elements just to provide a little bit more detail to the scene. This level here is a portal level where these portals go, who knows where, maybe other levels in the tower, maybe they take you off to another adventure. You can activate them as time goes on, but I'll just show you how I made some of these effects. So uh, first of all, I just, you know, I put some objects in here that might be murals or they might be storage or something that you'll need from a storytelling perspective and give the room a little bit more detail. Uh, but these portals themselves are pretty easy to make. Um, all of these lights are the same color and hex code as some of those elements, but you can see there's just floor and wibbly wobbly lines. This is a rug that's turned transparent. So if I go into my objects, I search for a rug, I can find this here. 
and I can just make it totally transparent. And I get this nice gold outline. Now maybe I want to use a different symbol later, but this is what I, I chose to do for this one. And then this right here, you may think it's the clouds and it's not, this is actually blood. So there is a tool, an object called blood. And while there's one that's actually, or a series that are actually colored blood for you, like these ones, there's a bunch that aren't. So if I change my default color to green, they'll appear. And this blood color you can make also semi-transparent, just like you would anything else. And you can use it for a lot of different things. I think it's a really good tool for, I don't know, just a different look. And you can see that um, when I colored it red, and then I, and I put a bunch of um, red lights around it, it makes for a nice effect. Um, this is just, this top part here is just pieces of floor, marble floor, more shadows to give it that rounded effect, which you guys saw earlier. And that's essentially just a, a really easy portal to make. And then if you own these Dungeon Draft files, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can come in and change the colors, you can change the components here, whatever. You'll notice that I took that same red and I cast it across the room. I thought, you know what, this is a really bright portal. I think it's going to catch the corner of this. I think that these other portals are going to do the same. And I think that's a really cool way of lighting up the room without making it look really messy with a bunch of big colored lights that may not actually do what you want to do. So you can go in and play with lighting all you want, but I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle and to cast in more of a controlled way on on these uh, edges here. So that is that level. Let's go to the next one. This is some kind of terrible experiments going on. You can see I've got some giant jars with some dead bodies in them and some bubbles and liquid. I've got some Faraday cages with some kind of arcane energy reaction happening. I've got some operating tables with chains some pretty terrible looking implements and I've got some sort of devices and hoses and uh, something's going on here that uh, doesn't sound good. And if I really zoom in here, I've even got little wires going into things. You can see I'm just using objects to create arrays that, and these are just mundane objects. This is actually just a fireplace <laughs> object, but I thought it made a really good array after I lit it up. Um, and, and then you also notice some things I'm doing with the floor. So let me kind of walk through some of these things because there's a lot going on here. By the way, something evidently got out of this, this bottle and crawled its way across the floor and maybe it got out. Let me deconstruct these bottles a little bit. First of all, this top, which is really nice looking, this comes from that, um, mine pack from, uh, Forgotten Adventures. You can see this is, this is also a bean, comes from the same pack just using these to create the top elements of it. There's also a wall in here. If I go into wall and edit points, this is a wall that's been laid out in a circle because I wanted to put lighting around the outside, but I didn't want that lighting to encroach on the, on the lid. I wanted the lid to be a little bit darker. So let's look at what else is inside of this. Get some of these lights and objects out of the way. There's my dead body. This, the, the glass itself, is just, uh, show you. It's just that empty pattern made semi-transparent and using that same hex code that I've been using again so I can turn it green. Uh, inside, these are just plates. When I say plates, I literally mean if you just look up plate, this might even be stock. I don't, I don't know if this is stock or not, but here's the colorable plate. And I made it um, semi-transparent. And when you put everything on top of it, it just looks like bubbles inside of there. Uh, this is more, um, these objects are more blood spatters, come from the same blood elements. You've got uh, these, um, a, a lot of different uh, footprints. Uh, that come from Forgotten Adventures as well. They're all colorable and made able to be made transparent. And then I did a wibbly wobbly line around the whole jar, which really 
is such a great addition because it, like I said, it lets you make your own custom stuff. And so here I have a nice looking giant jar full of dead bodies. And I just used some of the standard stuff. Now these lights, uh, I mentioned that there's balls in here. So if I put, I made these bright lights just kind of all on one side to make it look like maybe the jars were catching the light. Maybe they're giving off some light. And then I just did a less intensity over on the back side. And I just went around and did that. I put a bunch of components underneath to make it look like they were sitting on things. I actually used the stair path. So in Forgotten Adventures, you've got these stair paths. And if I just draw one for you, there's a stair path. Well, I made them really small and I turned them in some odd angles and I made some pipes. And then I covered those with some more paths going both directions to make it look like they were rounded a little bit. Uh, going on to my Faraday cages, these are, uh, these are actually blood. Um, and you can see I also used some of the cloud elements. In, underneath this cage here, I was just going to deco decompose this. It's just more, uh, oops, sorry, it's more clouds. And then ultimately, this is just a you know, metal disc. So you can make really believable things just with some raw components. These are some shields down here. If I can get to them. Just wanted a, a base that was a little bit more ornate. So I just grabbed some shields. Over here, I used the same underlighting effect that I used in, I think it was part two. So I have actually walls. If I go to my wall tool, edit points, oops. you can see there's a wall that's surrounding this operating table because I wanted to light this up without lighting up the operating table. Um, and so, you know, I've got, uh, if I go to my floor tool, I've got a couple of different floors. I've got this floor here that's going around the, the edges. And then I've got, get to it, and then I've got this floor in the middle. And then underneath, I've just got some clouds uh, of, of the same blue hex code and then intermixed with white. And then once I have all that laid, then I just put a couple of lights around it and I've created a nice underlit, creepy operating table. Um, these chains are just paths that I used. Uh, they're in here somewhere. There's a, it's called a chain wall. Um, these elements are from that same uh, mining set. Obviously, this is a bumper for a mine car, but it makes like a really good torture device. Um, and then these are just the same stair components, more stair components just stacked on top of each other. These little nails also come from that mining set, which I just love this little detail that you can add. It really just kind of finished off the, uh, uh, the, the table there. Um, you'll notice also I do have a lot of clouds that are obscuring the floor. I just really wanted to muck up this floor. Like there's just a lot of messiness going on in this, in this room. So there are a lot of cloud objects sitting on top of the floor um, that are just very, very transparent, almost imperceptible. But the result is it, uh, I think it gives the, a nice motif to this room in general. So if you guys saw something that you're curious about how I did it and you want me to go back, just let me know in the comments. But let's just go up, we're almost done. I think this is the last level that we're gonna look at today. This is some kind of layer and some nefarious thing lives in this layer. And I just used some, you know, some paths and some shading. And inside here are just a bunch of, um, Prager circle shadows just to obscure what was in there. Um, to make these bone piles, it's pretty easy. You just go to your scatter tool, look up bone, you grab any number of things that you want, and maybe you adjust the scale on them. I'm gonna take the shadow off, and then I'm gonna drop the spread down quite a bit. And I'm just gonna start laying bones around. And I'll do some at level 100. Some of these are at level 700 because I wanted to get above these walls to make it look like they're piled up. 
that's essentially how you get the bones piled. And you can do that with coins. You can do that with all kinds of things. Just turn the spread down to nothing or as low as it can go, and you can really start spamming things around. You can see a bunch of other custom things that I did here, just more of the same, you know, more blood that's semi-transparent, more chains, you know, these chains to make manacles, they just ended in a, a metal piece. If you look up metal, you can find all kinds of helpful things in here, but I used, you know, stuff in here. There's a little pin or nail that I, that just, I think, kind of just finished sort of dressing that up. Um, I did put a lot of shadows in here because I wanted this room to be really dark. So my shadows are really deep. And then I did the same thing with the lighting where I said, you know, I want to just highlight certain things. I even highlighted a little edge of this. I want to make sure they didn't miss this, uh, this trap door. I even highlighted on the, the skeletons where I thought the light might hit them. And it ends up just making certain things pop. And it lets you control the lighting in the scene versus just, you know, spamming a giant light, which can be helpful in some cases, but in other cases, it makes you lose the, uh, the motif that you're looking for. Uh, that's it. Um, that's all I had for at least today. This, uh, this is that removable piece I think I showed you earlier. Um, but yeah, with these components, you know, I'll, make, I'll end up making some more um, layers to this tower. I'll make some unfurnished rooms. But this, there's a lot of adventure to be had in this tower. It makes like a really creative, good dungeon crawl um, or, you know, a tower that you can come back to and have more adventures in, jumping off points to other adventures. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you want me to do more of this stuff, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, definitely subscribe. It helps me um, know that there's people that care about this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, if you have any requests on stuff you want to see in the future, let me know. In the meantime, uh, have fun making your maps.